the country, from the Pacific Coast to the Great Plains and the Upper Midwest, is experiencing moderate to exceptional drought conditions. The largest reservoir in the United States is running on empty. Lake Mead, behind iconic Hoover Dam, is at its lowest level in nearly 90 years. on excessive water users, asking cities to start reducing water use by an extra 10%. Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and today I wanna to give you guys some tips on how you can do less water changes with your aquariums. And this is pretty much my response to all the droughts that we see in the western states of the U.S. Currently they're experiencing some of the worst droughts ever. Um, they have their reservoirs at their lowest points and there's even water restrictions. I know as an aquarist that can be very stressful and um, I just want to put myself in your shoes, figure out what I would do in that scenario if it's possible to still keep all the fish that I currently keep. If not, what changes I would have to make and if I would have to stop fish keeping all together. And you know, while I'm brainstorming and putting myself in that scenario, um, I just consider these two aquariums. These are my no-tech aquariums. I don't have any aeration, I don't have any um, filters, no lights or anything like that. And um, these tanks are perfection when it comes to just that drought scenario. This is the tank that you want to have because so far I'm on week three without doing water changes. And I'm going to see how long it could go. But I got a good feeling I could go a long time on these aquariums without doing water changes. And that's because of these plants. I have an abundance of plants. And you know plants is only the other way to remove nitrates from your water. The one way is water changes. But when you can't do water changes, you have to go old school. You have to go natural. And the natural way is with plants. So right here I have a test strip. And just to prove to you guys that I don't have to do water changes. The main way we know whether or not we have to do water changes is by checking our water for nitrates. If our water has nitrates, we have to do a water change. If not, we don't. So, I'm um, just going to do a little test really quickly. And I have been testing once a week. Once a week I come prepared to do a water change, but I never have to because when I test, it always proves that um, there are no no nitrates in these aquariums. So both of these aquariums. I'm just testing this one to the left. But well, both of these aquariums are the same, so they come closer. The second row is the row we're paying attention to. This is the row that measures nitrates, and you see we have zero. And that's the reason why in these aquariums I don't have to do water changes. And if I was in California, Utah, or one of those places that's experiencing severe drought, these tanks would cause no worries because I don't have to do weekly water changes like I have to do in some of my other aquariums. And um, there's a couple of things that you have to do to get to this level and um, today I just want to break it down and show you what I would do to the rest of my fish room in order to make it so that I have to do less water changes if I was in that scenario of being limited with the amount of water that I have to use on my tanks so first off let's just look at the example of these aquariums so as I mentioned these tanks have an abundance of plants and this really is the foundation of these aquariums I, I actually thought when I first built this tank that the foundation was going to be water changes However, three weeks and no water change is proven that the actual foundation are the plants. The plants, they are consuming the nitrates produced by the fish. The plants are providing oxygen for the fish under the water. The plants are just so amazing. And like I said, this is the perfect example because this is what we see in nature. If you look at any pond, any river, any stream, um, you're going to see plants. So even if it's just in the form of algae, those plants are going to be there. And those plants are the foundation of that ecosystem. And this is what is necessary if you want to do less water changes. You need as many plants as you could get inside of your aquarium. The next tip is you need to actually understock your aquarium. Now, a lot of people, when we get aquariums, we want as many fish as we could get because fish are just awesome pets. However, like I said, if you're in a scenario where you only can use a certain amount of water, you may have no choice. You have to understock your aquarium so that you could balance the amount of waste produced by the fish with the amount of plants in here. So in this tank I have one paradise garami. She's a female and she's two inches and she's fully grown. And then I have four cherry barbs and they're all one inch. 
and they're fully grown. So altogether, in a 20 gallon aquarium, I have six inches of fish, and that's all I have. And compare the ratio of fish to plants. So we have six inches of fish, and look at how many plants we have. And that's something you gotta consider if you wanna be able to get away without doing water changes. You really need a ton of plants because these plants, they do consume the waste of the fish. However, they do it at a slow rate. So um, just factors you gotta consider if you wanna get to that point of doing fewer water changes. And lastly, the diet of the fish. This is also important. You can't overfeed your fish. And every time I can't feed this tank, because this tank, um, a lot of times I do forget about it because it's not in the fish room. And I tell other people, when they're feeding this tank, I'd rather that you starve the fish rather than overfeed them. Because in these aquariums especially, because there's no filter, it's very critical that you don't overfeed them. And on top of that, pay attention to what you're feeding your fish. For me, I'm feeding these guys fluval bug bites only. That's the only food they get because it's a more natural food for these fish. It breaks down more easily in their digestive system. And I'm just, these are the three things you gotta consider if you wanna lower the amount of water changes that you do. One, you need plants because you gotta get those nitrates out. And if you're not doing water changes, if you can't do water changes because you have water restrictions over there in the West, the only other option is with plants. Secondly, you can't overstock your aquarium. In fact, you have to understock your aquarium. And thirdly, the fish that are in your aquarium, you have to give them an appropriate diet. You can't overfeed them. Now, this is right here, the evidence. So far, I went three weeks without doing a water change, and I'm going to keep on going. Um, the only thing that I'm noticing is that I am getting some evaporation, but compared to a water change, that's definitely not a problem. A bottle of water could top off these two aquariums, and I still have leftover water. So, um, yeah, just something to consider. If you're in a scenario where you have no choice but to cut back on how much water you use, you don't have to give it to your aquariums. You just have to transform them into a more natural environment like you see here. Now these are small aquariums. I wanna go down to the fish room and I'll show you what I would do if I was in the West. If I was over there and they told me I have to stop using so much water, this is what I would do to my main aquariums. Okay everyone, so this is the fish room and these are my main aquariums. And these guys require a lot of water changes. And there's a number of reasons. For example, in this aquarium, we have monster fish. This commences peacock bass is bigger than my house cat. When you have a fish that big, he produces a lot of waste naturally. And then all his tank mates are also pretty big. Um, we have in this aquarium, this tank is overstocked. And then the thing is, these two tanks are on the same filtration system. So all the waste is being shared. So that's the reason why I have to do once we water changes on these two aquariums. And if I don't, um, the nitrate levels will rise. Down below, we have Adonimus. I have to do one to eat water changes on his aquarium. Right now, he does have some guests. We have my female Jaguar. She was up here, and um, she picked a fight with Adonimus' sister, who is, where is she? She's over here. That's the sister of Adonimus. She, the Jaguar picked a fight with her and it ended up really badly, so I had to take her out. And in my quarantine aquarium, I have a bunch of baby fish, so I had no choice but to put her in here. And so far, they're doing, they're doing all right. Sometimes she comes over here, he doesn't kill her. So maybe I'll get a pair. But anyway, with this aquarium, I have to do once a week water changes because this guy is a pig and it's my fault mainly. I like to overfeed this guy. And like I said, it's three things. You need plants, you need um, a low stock in an aquarium, and you need to make sure you're feeding properly. And this aquarium, I do have plants. I do have um, a low stock. However, I do gut feed this fish. I gut bust them. And that's the reason why this aquarium requires weekly water changes. This aquarium doesn't over here, that one to the left, that one doesn't require so many water changes because in this aquarium I have infant fish. These fish are like three weeks old and I'll, I have another video showing the actual growth of those fish. And um, what else? We have my African Sickle Aquarium. This thing doesn't require so many water changes and that's because one, I do have a decent amount of algae growing and as I said, algae is a form of plants and they do produce oxygen. I'm actually dosing fertilizers just to grow the algae because these fish naturally like eating algae. So you see the green on the rocks and then we also have some green up there on top and hopefully I get to the point where I have just everything green full of nice hair algae because it also benefits their diet and also because um, I don't overfeed these guys so that's the reason why I don't have to do so many water changes in this aquarium. But if I was in the west I still would be, do be doing too many water changes and with my current fish room I wouldn't be able to survive if I had water restrictions because these aquariums currently demand a lot of water changes. So what would I do differently? How can I make these aquariums like my two 20 gallon aquariums upstairs? 
The first thing I will have to do is increase the number of plants. Remember before, the ratio of plants to fish have to be significantly greater in terms of plants. You need way more plants than you actually have fish. So, look at all my tanks. I do have a lot of cichlids. You know cichlids are not a good combination with plants. They like to eat the plants and the ones that don't eat the plants just like to rip them up. So the first thing I will have to do is find a way to get as many terrestrial plants above my aquarium as possible. So a perfect example is up here. This is above um, my 880 gallon aquarium. Look at this. We have an absolute jungle of house plants. You can't see anything because the light, let me fix that. But an absolute jungle of house plants to the point where we even have flowers. And this is actually really good, especially for this aquarium. But the only reason why these plants can't sustain this aquarium is because as I told you guys, this aquarium is sharing the same water with that aquarium and they're sharing the same waste. And that's the reason why I still have to do once a week water changes. I do believe that if I was somehow able to replicate this over there on top of that aquarium, uh, that definitely would be a game changer and I do believe I would be able to do less water changes. So the first thing to do to decrease my water changes is increase the amount of plants in my aquariums. Even if I have to change the type of fish that I keep because at the end of the day, if you're being forced to um, limit the amount of water in your aquarium, the more plants, the better. The more plants, the less water changes you have to do. So even if I have to go and move out most of these herbivores, because not all the fish in this aquarium eat plants, some more than others, like my vieja, even though they are my favorite, but if I'm in that scenario where I have no choice, then I have no choice. Um, so yeah, as many plants as possible. The second thing I will have to do is destock my aquariums because all of my tanks are currently overstocked. And when I say destock, I actually mean understock. You gotta understock these aquariums and the less fish you have, the less water changes you will be required to do. For example, we look at this aquarium right here and let's say this aquarium was by itself and it wasn't joined to that tank with filtration. This is an 880 gallon aquarium and currently I have, I think I have like 10 fish, I'm going to count really quick. So two jaguars, um, two tilapia, four fish, we have three bass, so that's seven. We have red doe, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 15 fish in this aquarium and because of that I have to do once a week water changes. Let's say we take out five fish and eventually I do plan on taking out some fish because they're being jerks. One of which is the red devil, um, the two tilapia. Who else? My Lima Chevinos because I barely see it. My Polypterus and Lacheri. Let's, see, I, let's say I take out all those fish. I do believe the bio low will drop significantly. And maybe I could go two weeks without doing water changes. Right now, like I said, I do once a week water changes. And maybe I could go ahead with those sacrifices and do two weeks, every two weeks of water change. Not to mention, if I do cut off this aquarium and cancel out all that waste, the plants above, I do believe, will be able to help even further and that will cause me to go maybe three, maybe even four weeks without doing water changes. And on top of that, if I get rid of the jaguar, if I get rid of the red devil and tilapia, those are the main fish that like to destroy plants. Peacock bass are not that bad. But I can get more plants inside and that alone will cause me to have a better, um, a cleaner environment and it will cause me to have to do less water changes. And like I said, the less fish the better. If let's say two of my favorite fish were to pair up like my Tamensis and my Ocellaris, which is not not going to happen, but let's say two fish paired up. If I kept two fish in this aquarium as the only two fish with all those plants on top, no doubt I could go months without doing water changes. And that is the solution to my problem. On top of that, I also spoke about diet. And of course, you got to make sure you don't overfeed your fish. And I do raise my hand as one who is guilty because I do overfeed my fish because every time I come to the tank, these guys are begging and you know they're showing their colors and everything like that. However, like I said, in the scenario of being forced to do um, limited water changes, you gotta resist the temptation and you gotta feed your fish when necessary and you can't overfeed them. So right now I'm feeding my fish once a day and I skip a day and tell me if you guys think these guys um, are lacking anything. Right now they're not lacking anything. Some of these guys still have some nice guts. So that means I actually go a little bit further because if you look at these fish in a wild, if you look at your wild caught peacock bass and jaguars and everything, they're not as thick as mine. So that shows you that um, I still am overfeeding. And these guys in the wild, they really don't eat as much as I feed them. I feed my fish, like I said, six days a week. In the wild, I doubt they eat that much. On top of that, you want to consider what you're feeding your fish because certain foods will have um, worse effects on your water quality. Like when I feed raw foods like shrimp and raw fish, 
these often were um, converted to nitrates quicker and more easily compared to prepared foods. So all these things have a role and um, at the end of the day, if you want to do less water changes, it's very important to pay attention to the diet that you're feeding your fish. You can't overfeed. Okay, so to summarize everything, in order for you to do less water changes on your aquariums, you pretty much have to make your aquariums as natural as possible. And you start off by adding as many plants as you can, whether they are aquatic or terrestrial plants. The more plants, the better. And really, you can never have enough plants. And um, even if you have to take some fish out that will destroy your plants, you need to have as many plants as you can in your aquariums because this is the only thing that you could do to remove nitrates besides doing water changes. After that, you need to reduce the amount of fish in your aquarium. And that's simply because the less fish that you have, the less waste they will produce. And you're going to give your plants a better chance of being the only source of removing those nitrates. And finally, you just want to make sure you don't overfeed your fish because these fish will want to be overfed. They will beg for food nonstop, but you need to resist. And this is um, the best way to do less water changes. And of course, this is not the preferred way of fish keeping. Some of us are not into planted aquariums. Some of us like to keep a lot of fish in our tanks. However, like I said, in a scenario of being in a drought and being limited with how much water you have to use, I believe that this is the only way to go. And if you do do this way, um, you will be able to go months without doing water changes, depending on how well you do these steps, depending on how many plants you actually put in your aquarium and how many fish you actually keep. This will determine how many months you could go without doing water changes, but you definitely will be able to do less water changes. And there are some other benefits besides saving money on water. You also um, could keep more stable water parameters. For example, in this aquarium over here, this is my African cichlid tank. I like to keep a high pH, or at least I want to keep a high pH. However, when you do once a week water changes, that's pretty much impossible because I'm working with the pH for my faucet, which is 6.8, and then I have buffers because I want my pH to be high within the sevens so i have these rocks and the sand to buffer it up so slowly it buffers it up and by the end of the week i do a water change and all the higher ph water is taken out and i replace it with the low ph water from my tap water and that's the reason why my african slickers they flash because they're uncomfortable with the ph and most importantly they're uncomfortable with the unsteady ph so the less water changes you do you'll also be able to keep more stable water parameters like your ph and all those other parameters that benefit the fish when they are more stable. So there are some more pros to um, doing less water changes. And um, I actually do look forward to doing it. Even though in New Jersey we don't see a drought and hopefully we won't see a drought, I still don't mind doing less water changes. And so because of that, I do have some plans to make some changes. Right now with this aquarium, as I told you guys, I do have a lot of plants above, but I do want to get some plants underneath the water. And to do that, I do believe I will be taking out some of the fish. Like I said, the Jaguars, they're going to breed, so eventually I want them out. Um, who else? My Red Devil, he's a jerk. My Tilapia, they're jerks. My Shalomos, I barely see them. And besides that, the Peacock Bass, they're not bad with plants. The Pike may be bad with plants, but the Pike likes to stay on the bottom. So if I'm able to keep like a Nubius all on these pieces of wood, I do believe I'll be able to get more plants in there. On top of that, I'll have less fish, and no doubt I'll have a more healthy ecosystem and no doubt from that, I'll be able to do less water changes. Now, as always, let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section below. If you were in a scenario where you had to limit the amount of water you were using because of a drought, how would you go about it? For those of you who currently are in the West and you're currently experiencing a drought, what are you doing? Um, I think it's something that we all should think about, not just with droughts, but with floods and power outages and all these natural disasters because they can occur to all of us. And I think it's better that we all be prepared rather than to wait for it to actually come to our doorstep. So yeah, those are just my thoughts. Hopefully it helps somebody. Um, and yeah, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And that's going to be all. I'll catch you guys on the next one.